these were the winner. These buns were amazing. They are not nearly as, they're soft, but they're dense and they're heavy. Today we are testing hamburger buns. We are having burgers for dinner, so I need to get something cooking or we're not gonna have anything to put our hamburger buns on. We do have a recipe that we use already, but um, I have seen a lot of different ingredients that I would like to test out. Okay, so one thing I've been really interested in experimenting with is putting potato flakes in bun recipes. Now the ingredients in this are not very clean. Um, it's organic potatoes, mono and diglycerides of vegetable origin, no corn. Either way, I'm not exactly a fan of using a processed ingredient, but I am curious because I've heard really good things. So we're going to do a recipe that has potato flakes. The other thing I want to experiment with, um, I have a recipe that calls for bread flour. Now, I have two different ways that I want to try the bread flour. I bought this whole wheat, um, I think it's whole wheat, it just says organic hard bread spring wheat, but it's a ultra unifying unbleached bread flour from Azure. So I'm going to use this in one of the recipes and then I'm going to use the same recipe, but I'm going to make my own bread flour. If you didn't know, you, woof, getting puffs, if you didn't know, you can take, um, a cup of regular all-purpose flour, take out one and a half teaspoons of the flour and add one and a half teaspoons of the vital wheat gluten. And this just increases the protein content of that flour and it makes bread flour. So I'm gonna try that, I'm gonna try this, and I'm gonna try the potato flakes. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get lost in the sauce making three bread recipes at once, but we are gonna give it a go. So the first thing I decided to do was mix up the homemade bread flour version. So in this bowl, I'm going to make four cups worth. And basically how it goes is you just put your four cups in here, and then I'm going to take out, um, let's see, one and a half teaspoons times four. So, so six teaspoons total I'm going to remove of the flour. And then I'm going to add back six teaspoons of the vital wheat gluten and whisk it all up. So today I am going to be doing a little bit of voiceover because a lot of my audio quality, again, was a little bit dodgy, but for a totally different reason this time. Um, I do think I need to invest in an actual camera. As of right now, everything has been on my iPhone, so um, I think there's something going on with my iPhone jack that doesn't allow audio to transmit properly. So, <laughs> this has been, I absolutely love filming and editing content, um, but the tech side of things is definitely where the learning curve is, and it's not my first love, but I am going to get it figured out. Now I think I'm going to start with the two recipes that are basically the same recipe, just using different flours. All right, so I think what my plan is, is I'm going to do the yeast and honey in the first milk, and I'm going to let that proof and then I'm going to get that kneading in the stand mixer. And while that is kneading, I will start proofing the second um, mixture. So over here, I have my yeast mixture, which is nice and proofed. And I'm going to add it to the flour and salt mixture. And I'm going to put this butter in there and just get it nice and mixed up. I do like to give my doughs just a preliminary stir because I feel like the KitchenAid doesn't do a good job at starting the dough. Um, but then it does a great job kneading it for the most part. I will show you later one of my pet peeves with this particular KitchenAid. So I did start this dough with just three and a half cups and I felt that it was too wet as you can see here. So I started adding um, a tablespoon at a time in and at the end it's really frustrating because I feel like this KitchenAid does not touch the bottom. It doesn't really get in there and pull up everything from the bottom. So I might have added a little too much flour to this, um, although it did come out delicious. It was fine. Now I'm just going to mix up the bread flour version. And then this is, this is the Azure Standard Whole Wheat. You can see it, it's actually pretty fine. It's a little less white than a regular wheat would be. Very powdery, almost like cake flour powdery. end up adding the full um, cup of flour at the end of the last one. So we'll see if this one's sticky too. So 
So far this looks a little firmer. Here is my rising station. I'm working on learning how to do some new camera angles because I got a much better tripod. So this dough, it was looking really firm for most of the kneading, but then towards the end, it started getting a little um, more damp than I would like. But I think it's gonna be fine. What I'm gonna do is just get a little bit of oil on my hand to help me reach in here and grab it out. That way it's not sticking to me as much. that whole wheat needs to sit a while to absorb um, the liquid, I think before you knead it. Um, I was hoping that this wouldn't be quite as fussy since it's ground the way it is, but I could be wrong about that. And that might be what would help this dough along. But one thing I like to do in the winter months is heat up a rice sock and just tuck it next to my bowl of whatever I'm rising. Um, it was about 62 or 63 in the house on this day. And I find that just warming up your rising station really, really helps your dough get a good rise on it. All right, we've regrouped a little bit. And here I just have all-purpose flour and salt. Okay, I'm gonna use the King Arthur um, potato flake recipe, but I'm gonna change a couple things. It does call for dry milk, but I'm just gonna sub that in for milk. Um, so instead of the cup of water and a fourth cup of dry milk, I'm just gonna use a cup of milk and then it doesn't have you heat up your milk or proof your yeast or anything. And um, I just feel like it's weird making a dough with cold liquids. Uh, so I'm gonna heat up my milk. I'm gonna let my yeast hang out in there with the sugar for a while. And then I'm gonna combine everything in the uh, mixer. I notice this about King Arthur recipes. Very often they don't um, have all those steps. And I'm not sure why. I don't know if that's like a yeast difference or something. I because it asks for, you know, King Arthur brand, all of this, um, but I'm not using King Arthur anything other than the recipe. So this recipe calls for two tablespoons of sugar instead of using honey. And then it actually calls for literally a, a little less yeast. It calls for two teaspoons versus a full tablespoon. I'm gonna tidy up my kitchen surface while that takes a minute to get nice and fluffy. All right, in goes the yeast. I do think the yeast is happier with sugar than it is with honey. I know a lot of people really love using honey, so here are the potato flakes. I've made actual potato buns before and they weren't that great. Also, I feel like the actual potato buns were so labor intensive because you had to cook the potato and then peel the potato and rice the potato. And I'm just not trying to do all that right now. came together it feels really soft I do like this dough see how it rises up though get the water all right it has been an hour here is the first dough. Looks all right. Let's give it a go. I am going to lay parchment paper on the sheet. This is If You Care brand and they're already cut. It's so nice. I'm going to prepare two sheets since I have two recipes that are just about ready to go in the oven. All right, it says this should make nine buns. So I guess my strategy here, I'm gonna cut three rows. And 
and then I'm going to shape them. I think some will be just a little bit smaller, but that's okay. Those ones get assigned to the kids because <laughs> they can't eat. They can't get their mouths around a huge bun anyway. All right, so I'm going to spin it down, sort of like a roll, and then I guess just flatten it. and put it on my sheet. And then once this is done, they rise for another 30 minutes. It's a few minutes shy of one hour, but I do wanna take a look at that whole wheat dough in just a moment and see what it is up to. All right, this has risen quite a bit. It, I don't know, it looks nice. It looks very whole wheat, but we'll give it a go. This dough actually feels really nice. It doesn't feel dense, um, which has been my experience with whole wheat products. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna shape these just like the other ones. Wow, this dough actually feels very nice. That would be a really pleasant surprise if this whole wheat turned out because it's definitely got more nutrition. All right, so I'm just gonna let these rise. So this is the, the whole wheat from Azure, the Unifine bread flour. And then this is our homemade bread flour with the vital wheat gluten. All right, so now I'm working with the potato flake dough, and this dough actually feels the toughest of all of them. I'm really surprised. But this dough wants you to rise, once you shape it into buns, you're supposed to rise it for about an hour and a half versus the 30 minutes that the other doughs require. So. Perhaps we will just be eating the rest of those potato flakes as instant mashed potatoes. <laughs> I like the idea of having something like instant mashed, mashed potatoes in our bulk food storage, but um, I don't like to store things that we don't consume regularly, and I don't think we're gonna switch over to eating just dry mashed potatoes, you know? All right, here are the buns made using the Azure bread flour, and they were a pleasant surprise. They're definitely whole wheat, and so they came in second. These ones over here are the bread flour that we made using the Vital Wheat Gluten, and these are the winner. These buns were amazing, um, but honestly, both of them were good. So here's the whole wheat cut open. We might even make these whole wheat ones sometimes just for a healthier option. Um, they are not bad, but this one right here, this is the... Uh, vital wheat gluten bread flour and look how soft these are. These buns are definitely the winner All right dinner is done. We ate the other buns for dinner, but here are the potato flake and They are not nearly as They're soft, but they're dense and they're heavy So let's see what they look like inside Yeah, they're dense I mean, it's, it's soft, but it is much heavier than the other buns. Let's see what it tastes like. It's okay. But we prefer the other buns better. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this week. I linked all of these recipes down below. If you're looking to save money, making your own uh, bread products at home is just a great way to do that. So anyway, I will see you all in the next video. Have a great week. Bye. Bye.